In this video, I'm teaching you a super convincing and effective card force where you can influence the audience to think of the card you want them to be thinking of so that you can reveal it in a spectacular way. I'm also gonna teach you a little bit of a presentation you can do with this where it turns into a sort of card transportation or transposition effect. This is one of my favorite forces of all time and it is practically self-working and the audience member gets to do most of the work. So they're gonna feel at the end like they chose the card themselves, they handled the cards themselves. This is why the crisscross or cross cut force is one of the most effective forces you can still do out there. And the method is so minimal that it allows you to focus on the presentation. Let's get into it right now. I'm gonna use a red deck and a blue deck for this. So the red deck will be your deck. And if you were here yourself, I'd have you do this, but I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. So what I would ask you to do is just to cut this deck into two piles anywhere. And we're just gonna mark where you made that cut. And the purpose of this deck is that I'm gonna look through this deck in a moment and I'm gonna try to actually find your card. But for now, I want you to go ahead and memorize your card. All right, and again, you could have cut anywhere. So now it's my job to figure out what your card was. And this deck is almost like my mirror to your deck of cards. So as I look through these cards, I'm gonna be looking at you and see if I can sort of transmit to me, from you, what your card was. I think I got it. All right, on the count of three, one, two, Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, I guess I need to keep working on my mind reading skills just so I get better at this. What was it? Okay, King of Spades. Don't know how I missed that. That's the clubs, hearts. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't actually see it. You said it was the King of Spades. Oh, well, here's a blue card. It looks like you somehow found the only blue card in this deck. So I wanna show you the cross cut force and talk through some simple applications. And then that was just a, a fun freestyling with the two colored decks. And we'll walk through that in a moment. But for now, this is one of the best forces you can do. And I still do it to this day. Uh, this is something that I think the best magicians understand. These things that you learn that are uh, classic, foundational, or quote unquote easy. Um, some tricks that are you know self-working, uh, like this force, you could call it self-working in a sense. That doesn't mean you need to move on from it and forget it forever. Uh, keep it in your tool belt. Uh, come back to these simple foundational illusions because they can actually be some of the strongest. So a lot of magicians really love the cross-cut or criss-cross force because it is so minimal in terms of method that it does allow you to focus on presentation. And despite its minimal method, uh, I think it avoids some of the weird clunkiness that a lot of other self-working illusions, forces, uh, things, techniques have because the procedure is not too complicated. So you have that elegance of a simple pr uh, procedure but you're basically doing no sleight of hand. It's all in the presentation and in the psychology. The force card is on the top or on the bottom, and it can be done on the fly by you just memorizing the card after the deck is shuffled, or it can be a deck that you bring out of the box ready to go with your force card. There are other methods to make it seem like the audience has shuffled the deck truly, and then you're able to get that force card where it needs to be. But that's for another time. Let's just for now assume that you have um, the Ace of Spades as your force card on top. You're gonna tell the audience member to do the steps in this specific wording. So you wanna be casual, but pay attention to these words. So ask them to just cut the deck into two piles. Now, already off the bat, don't say cut the deck, because they might cut the deck and complete the cut, right? 
And the great thing about this instruction is you don't need to check your audience member's dexterity with the deck of cards ahead of time because pretty much anyone is gonna be able to understand and just do this, right? So they're not holding the deck, they don't need to shuffle or cut the cards truly. They just need to move one packet over to the side. So you tell them to cut the deck into two piles and they will do so. Now, this part might need a little more help from you depending on their level of confidence. You're also trying to help them feel at home and natural. You know, it can be scary to help a magician. So make them feel at ease and you're gonna instruct them to pick up this packet and turn it to the side and put it on top of that packet. You can also do this yourself if you're worried about that part of the procedure. And you can say, I'm just gonna mark where you cut. But if you're able to get them to do it, that's great because then they'll have touched the deck the whole time. So you have them pick this up and you're gonna explain to them, hey, just turn it to the side and place it right there. You can point and they will put it cattywampus here Hence the name crisscross, you kind of have a crisscross thing here. So what has happened is they've placed these cards over to the side and then they've quote unquote marked where they've cut by putting it at an angle here with the insinuation being we're gonna get back to either the top card of this packet or the bottom card of this packet. So here's the psychology of this. We've started here They've cut the deck into two piles. That feels like a very fair cut. At this point, if they were following, they would know they've cut here. But that's not the card we're gonna have them memorize in a moment. So then, on our own, or we have them do it, we're saying out loud that I'm gonna mark where you cut. In truth, this is illogical. <laughs> but for some reason, it always goes over, it always just feels right. And this is procedure, so in the presentation, we're not being too, we're not running when we're not getting chased, right? So we're just being casual about it, like, hey, we're going to get back to that in a minute, but I'm just going to uh, mark where you cut. So of course, this is face down, but I'll leave it face up for demonstration. So what you need to do now is what we call time misdirection. An audience member could retrace their steps, but we're going to make it harder to do so by just saying some stuff for a few seconds. But of course, you want to make it meaningful. So whatever your prediction is gonna be, like let's say you had a written prediction prepared ahead of time and you made sure that this was in the spot to match it. That's when you would introduce that. So maybe you have a prediction in your wallet. And so you take out your wallet, like actually, I wasn't sure when I was gonna pull this out, but I thought I was gonna talk to someone today who we would get to do this experiment with. And so I have this here, I'm gonna go ahead and put it here so that you know there's no changing and I'm locked in. That's enough. Anything like that, whatever you are going to point toward the reveal being, that's probably helpful. I used to do a live prediction and say, you know, you can get a hunch about people sometimes, and sometimes it's things that don't even make sense, but I'm getting a hunch about you now. Do you mind if I write that down? And that's kind of interesting, right? So whatever would be an interesting reveal, you can just kind of think through it. And that's the great thing about forces, is they leave you up to the creativity to come up with or find on the market or from other magicians ways to reveal the card. So this is the setup to a payoff. So you're gonna take some time, lean toward thinking about something else for a moment and then come back. So you can come back and recap, hey, you cut the cards, you cut them, I didn't touch the deck, right? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and have you look at the card you cut to. So again, you can instruct them to do this or do it yourself, but you're gonna have them pick up this packet and look at the force card. Again, it could be this card if you want, if you want it to be the bottom card. In this situation, we've had it as the top card. So they'll look at the card and then they can place it back in. They can also shuffle the deck if they like, although it doesn't really matter. Not only does it not matter for the illusion, but it doesn't necessarily make sense for the presentation if you have a prediction. But given people's knowledge of card tricks, sometimes it just feels right <laughs> to shuffle it and to have that control. So you can give that to them if you'd like. Then you can do one more recap if you'd like, just explaining you cut the deck yourself. Uh, you might loop back to the hunch that you had or um, whether it's in the moment prediction or uh, an ahead of time prediction, whatever you'd like to do, and then you can reveal the card. So that is the simple, straightforward nature of the cross-cut force. Things to remember. 
Of course, you need to load the card to the right spot. You need to instruct cutting the deck into two piles, and you need to call this marking the cut. Cut the deck into two piles, marking the cut. Those are important words. Third, you need the time misdirection. Fourth, recapping once or twice, and then saying that we're going to look at the card you cut to. You're emphasizing that they cut to this card. So then they are thinking of that card and memorizing it, and you get to move forward with the reveal. So that's the simple method. Let's talk about now uh, just some freestyling I did kind of in the moment where you can use the one ahead principle to load this card to the bottom of this deck. So the great thing about this force is that this won't be seen. So you can have them cut it into two piles, quote unquote mark where they cut. And in the video you saw that my motivation for this deck is for it to be almost like the mechanism by which I'm trying to read you. So I think that's helpful, that adds some intrigue and that allows for the time misdirection. Then they go here and they memorize the card and that's ready to go with the blue king inside. Then you can just make a false prediction. Reveal it and you have the magician got it wrong trope. And then uh, you can really, you don't wanna rush this, ask them what the card was, they'll tell you and you can look through and then with this in their hands or nowhere near you, you get this great reveal of the blue king. So that was just me freestyling a little bit, coming up with a fun presentation and using that one ahead principle. If we were to take this a step further, what if this could be a transposition? So let's say we take out the red king here, we have the blue king in here, and you move forward with all of that. All you have to do is make sure that this is in the middle maybe, and when you're showing this side, you don't go too far. So you're gonna get the card wrong again. You have this reveal moment, trick gone wrong. Ask what was the card? And you go through, you find it, and you say, oh, I don't know how I got that wrong. Oh, wait, this king is red. What happened here? And then you go, over here and it is a oops <laughs> when it's cut in the middle it's a transposition effect one more thing is you can use this to force multiple cards so if you're familiar with the toxic force or number forces or something like that this is a terrible example because i have like most of the tens here you wouldn't do that as your number force but if you had like five to six cards ready to go if you're able to also insert false shuffle or even uh, illusions and techniques where you have it seem like the spectator has freely shuffled the deck and then you're able to get these loaded on top or bottom, then you can do that simple cut and then you're gonna come up with a motivation to get a few cards, but you might also just be like, let's just grab a few cards here. So you cut here, da 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 da, you're gonna go to the five cards and that's your number force. So that connects to other tricks. We'll have to talk about that at another date, but I did wanna to link to that. This doesn't just have to be a single card force. Now, when people do card forces, I think they like to do maybe a little more procedure. Maybe they like to have it seem like multiple audience members are picking these cards, but I think if you're able to combine the audience seeming to have gotten to shuffle the deck and the procedure for the other number that you're revealing, you know, that's a step two. So you don't want to over belabor this. So I've enjoyed this as a quick way to get to the few cards because by this point, if you've added other procedure to make it seem really fair, you just want to get on with it. So that's one way you can connect a number force to this force. So that was the cross cut force. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below or what is your favorite card force if you have a favorite card force. Keep enjoying your magic, stay a hobbyist at heart, and I'll see you in the next video.